Yeah, if you have an opportunity to uh, know your state program managers, we have a lot of people that are passionate about pipeline safety, and I, I encourage my counterparts to get out there and share what they know and their passion for it with the public there, and so we're moving towards that more often. But, you know, I had the luxury of having mostly uh, professional pipeline people in my state. I don't have the issues with the master meters that Robert does, so they need constant attention, hand holding. So that's another thing I have a luxury of not, not having to do. Uh, but he brings up a good point about transparency. I mean, we've never been about hiding in the bushes and gotcha. Uh, I have regular meetings with my large operators, uh, some monthly, others quarterly, others twice a year. Uh, we constantly in communication with the other uh, with each other are no surprises uh, encourage self-reporting which we do have and um, I think we developed a very good uh, relationship with our pipeline operators and I, that also has paid dividends for us so. all right we are about out of time but uh, we have time for one last question and oh look who gets to ask it Carl Weimer uh, uh, um, <laughs> Oh, I got, and I'm getting the signal that I only have two minutes to ask my question. Um, I, I, it was interesting that both of you mentioned that you, your programs got ramped up and started to work towards maturity because of a tragedy. Are there other states that haven't got there yet, and how do we get them to be more proactive and ramp up before they face a tragedy? But I think, for one, meetings like this is, is important, too. I, I believe that the people need to reach out to those state agencies. They need to, to, to be proactive. They need to speak to them. Uh, engage with your pipeline safety programs. I, I don't think enough people do that. I don't think that they're, uh, when it comes to distribution, you may be turning to the wrong people for, for the information that you really need to have. Uh, and being the chairman of NAPSA, I, I can tell you that pipeline safety is, is the only thing that we're really focused on. We don't, like your slide, we, we have this blank stare going forward to do everything that we can possibly do. And I think that in today's day and age, a very, I, I can't think of a single program manager who would think that they should wait till something bad happens before they start taking actions. And they can build off the experiences of all the other state programs. We are doing more information sharing than we ever have in the past. We're talking to each other in different ways. Communi again, back to the basic communication, we're communicating in better ways than we ever have been in the past. I think going forward, that's gonna help everybody. Yeah, there's some incredibly talented people running these programs, and I encourage you when you go back to your states, if you aren't aware of your pipeline program, uh, to, to make contact with those folks. Uh, they're more than happy to tell you all about their programs and what they're doing for pipeline safety. Uh, Robert's absolutely correct. It, it doesn't take, it shouldn't take a disaster in order to get things changed. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of good work out there. Every disaster isn't tied, is not indicative of the quality of the program. As Same with the, the uh, reportables, the federal reportables. I mean, I don't believe personally that um, you know, my seven uh, incidents are indicative of the quality of the program when you look at what the incidents, uh, uh, you know, are about. And so, uh, um, uh, I, like I said, I encourage you to reach out to those folks, and they're, they're more happy to share their passion and their stories with you. All right, let's thank these speakers one more time. And I'd just like to point out, if you want to contact your state regulator, there's a new publication from the Pipeline Safety Trust in your packet called The Local Government Guide to Pipeline Safety. And in the back of that, there's a list of all 50 states and who your regulator is in that state and how to contact them. So there you go. Have fun.